Writing is an important skill for any business researcher. However, the ability to write clearly is useful for other purposes as well. For example, if you ever need to write a clear memo on what to do about your company strategy, then being able to write and communicate your ideas in a clear and structured format is essential. For us academics, we have lots of these different writing guidelines. This is the American Psychological Association publication manual, and this is kind of like a Bible for writing, and it contains all kinds of detail. But it also contains useful information for students. For example, they have a sample student paper. So whenever you have uh, any questions or any uh, concerns about the detail, then these kind of writing manuals can ha be helpful. I'll be referring to this writing manual throughout this talk. Effective writing is a very important skill. And effective writing consists of a couple of different things. First, you need to be able to express your ideas concisely. And you also need to be able to express your ideas in a structured way and in a way that your readers understand. When we look at research reports such as master's thesis or an article, they tend to follow this kind of structure. So you start with introduction, then you follow with literature review, data and methods, results, discussion and conclusions. The idea here is that you start from a very abstract level, first introduce the topic, then you go to the details of what you actually did, and then at the end you return back to the abstract level explaining what is the, the bigger meaning of your results. If you want to take a look at examples of structures or what kind of structure to follow, this manual for, that I just showed you uh, contains examples such as this example student paper, which is also available on the internet. So if you want to see what a, a student written research paper or student essay might look like, then uh, this book gives you one example. About structure and what goes into each part, the APA, American Psychological Association, also provides these journal reporting guidelines. And these are followed by many management journals, either explicitly or implicitly. Explicitly means that they tell that the APA guidelines should be followed, and implicitly they just uh, list recommendations that are similar to the APA guidelines without referring to the guidelines. APA has recommendations for how to structure a quantitative article. So here's a list of what goes into each section. So if you are wondering what you should write in the introduction, for example, then this list covers you. It's a four page list of all kinds of detail and it tells you in which order you present this detail and what detail needs to be reported. This is the same for qualitative research. So the reporting standards um, are a bit different here, but if you want to uh, do a qualitative study, then nevertheless, this is going to be highly useful. In addition to the structure of your report, there are a couple of things that you need to pay attention to when you write. Professional writers, of course, go through a, a lot of... <laughs> in addition to following the standards for structure and in its order you report material in your report, there are also other things that you should know about writing. Professional writers and some researchers take writing classes that cover all kinds of things uh, related to word choices and, and grammar. But as a student who just wants to do something to your writing, you need to understand what you should focus the most on. And this book by Hoffman presents this nice figure of what bothers readers. So the purpose of writing is to inform the reader. And uh, the reader is informed if they enjoy writing, enjoy your reading your writing, and if they get your point from your writing. But if your writing is so bad that it's annoying to the reader, then the reader will not read your writing and they'll just, uh, or they, they read it, but they can't keep focused. And the book talks about what bothers uh, the most readers. And it turns out that word choices, grammar mistakes, those are kind of like small things. But if your paragraphs are not in uh, structured logically or are not in logical order, that makes it really hard to understand the text. So let's look at some writing tips and writing techniques and principles on the paragraph level next. So how do you write, make your writing understandable? I'll give you five tips. The first one is unity, which refers to paragraph having one idea. 
then it's cohesion, which means that the sentences follow each other logically and it's circular to see how they're connected. Then how do paragraphs we fit together? So that's kind of like a bigger level structural thing. And then are uh, two elements of style. One is the abstract, this jargon and active voice. The second one is simplicity and lack of clutter. Let's focus on what is unity. And uh, unity can be understood through uh, a bad example. So when I first read this, uh, a paragraph from the course book, I found it really hard to understand. And I think that the fact that I find it hard to understand, then it means that there's something wrong with the paragraph. When you don't understand something, then uh, it's either that you lack the, uh, the re prerequisite understanding of the, uh, the background knowledge to understand the writing, or it might be that the writing is just poor. And most beginner researchers or students think that they are just not on the level of the writing. So the writing is too challenging for them because it's so advanced. But it can be that the writing actually is not that advanced. There's no many, not many advanced concepts, but the writing is bad. And what this paragraph here lacks is unity. So it's a very long paragraph and it's very difficult to see like what is the main point. If you go to Wikipedia, it tells you that a paragraph is a, a set of sentences about a single topic or idea. The same thing you can find in, in different writing manuals, like this Hoffman's book, which is a, a really great book on academic writing. It tells you that paragraph is uh, a set of sentences around a single topic. And there are two important sentences. There is the opening sentence that's, that introduces the topic. And then there's the, uh, the final sentence, the concluding sentence, which just wraps up the paragraph. If those are not present, and particularly the topic sentence, then it's going to be very hard to understand what the paragraph is about. Uh, Monipoli and, and his co-author explain unity in this way. And, and this is included in the course readings. So a good paragraph is one where there's a single idea or a single story, and that's typically set in the first sentence, and then the other sentences are elaborate and support it. The importance of topic sentence and how it contributes to unity can be understood by looking at this uh, example here. So the example opens by saying that the president is the head of the state and head of government of the United States. So the topic sentence here tells that this paragraph is about the different roles of the president. Then the following sentences uh, explain these two roles, head of the executive and then uh, commander in chief. But then the third sentence, third body sentence is that president is elected uh, uh, through uh, electoral college. And that doesn't really fit to the topic. So. The problem here is that uh, now the, the opening sentence said that this is about president's roles. And then why do we have this sentence about how presidents are elected? One way to fix this paragraph is to tell that uh, the, in the topic sentence that this paragraph is also about the choice of presidents. So it's about presidents it's generally not specifically about president's roles. Here is another example, and um, this is a, a very uh, hard to understand paragraph. It tells that a patent regime existed for processes, reduced price control framework, low cost of raw materials, and manufacturing in India developed into the world's fifth largest supply of bulk drugs at cheap rates. So it talks about India developing into a bulk supplier of, of inexpensive medication. Okay, so that's the topic of the paragraph. But if we look at the other, sentences. It just talks about uh, there were 20,000 entities and only 10 companies that actually undertake uh, proper R&D. So how is that related to the topic sentence? It's very hard to see how these individual sentences relate to the actual topic. You could uh, improve this writing by linking the sentences back to the topic, or you could make the topic sentence more all-encompassing. If we take a look at a good example of writing, we can take a look at the sapiens paper, which I have covered uh, in the past. And this is a good example of unity. So the first, this paragraph is um, pretty long, but it's well structured. So the topic sentence says that 
early internationalization is something of startups is something that traditional theories don't cover well. And then uh, the concluding sentence say that um, this study seeks to examine the effects of early internationalization. Everything in between fits into the topic of prior theory and early internationalization. So this is support sentences. So this is a well-constructed paragraph. There is nothing unnecessary that doesn't belong here. It all contributes to this discussion of the topic. Now let's get back to our example from the course book. And we can start analyzing this and the first thing that we notice here is that the topic sentence is a bit long. The diverse nature of business resources means that there is considerable debate about its relationship to practice. So I'm immediately starting to think like who are the debaters in this debate? Is this debate among practitioners or is this debate between practitioner and researcher or is it a debate between researchers? So it's not entirely clear who are being debating. If you want to improve your paragraphs, spend a lot of time on writing the first sentence and making it super clear what the paragraph is about. So uh, then we have things about paradigm here and it's not immediately clear why paradigm would be related to this uh, diverse nature. So maybe we should mention that paradigms already in the topic sentence. Then the conclusion the sentence here is very long. It's hard to understand because it's so long and it doesn't really conclude. It introduces new facts. So the final sentence in a paragraph typically just brings everything together without introducing any new topics, particularly if it's a long paragraph. But the biggest problem here is the lack of unity. So uh, if we think about how many ideas are presented in this paragraph, I can find at least three ideas. The first idea is that there is a discussion on how research and practice are related. So that is the first discussion. Then uh, there's the idea of evidence-based management and whether that is supported or not. And then uh, the third idea is paradigmatic differences. We can try to restructure this paragraph to make more, it more understandable, but because I don't want to spend my time on, on working on this piece of text, I'll just uh, give it to uh, the Claude AI. And you are not supposed to read it, but just to uh, show that when I give this long paragraph to Claude and I just tell the Claude that I want to work on this paragraph, even, if, even when I don't ask it to do anything, it splits the paragraph into small, small, four, four smaller paragraphs. And these are already a lot easier to understand than the original long one. But I want to structure it around the, the three ideas that I discovered. And then I tell the AI to do that. So we can see here that there is a one concise and unified paragraph about the relationship between uh, the, about the generally the top, the discussion of how research and practice are linked. Then there's the second paragraph, which is the concept of evidence-based management, which is now defined in this paragraph, something that the original paragraph didn't do. So this is the first time that the idea of evidence-based management is brought up in the book. And if you, when you bring up a new idea, particularly in a textbook, you should define it clearly, which the textbook chapter doesn't do. No, the paragraph doesn't do. And then we have the, uh, the final paragraph that talks about different paradigms. So if you compare this, uh, pa uh, these three paragraphs, which contain the same information in a slightly restructured way in three unified paragraphs against the original very long paragraph, it is not difficult to see which one is the easier for the reader. The second point about paragraphs that makes it easier to read is cohesion. And cohesion refers to that the sentences go together. So it's kind of like one sentence follows the, the other or the previous one. And there, is, uh, there are clear connections between the sentences. So they're just not independent statements of fact, but they are somehow related. This example shows the importance of cohesion and when it fails. So the first paragraph, sample A here, lacks cohesion. So we have the first um, opening sentence, developing combustion effective state of the art power plants is a proactive approach. And then the first, topic, uh, first uh, supporting sentence says that emissions should be reduced. It's not clear how these are connected because there is no this, 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 there are no links between the sentences. So these are just independently stated facts and there is no effort to link these together. In the sample B, which is uh, made by the textbook author, uh, he is adding uh, these 
connecting things. So the open topic sentence is that the second and more proactive approach is to develop more combustion effective state-of-the-art power plants. So the key here is the, the word combustion effective and uh, then uh, the next one is the trust here is reducing emissions in the first place. The change here is that now it's more clear that the, uh, the second sentence is directly about how this combustion effectiveness uh, should be defined. So combustion effectiveness is defined as reducing emissions. And you can, you can compare these um, paragraphs and here's the explanation from the author. So you can see clearly that when you build these little links, you refer to the previous uh, sentence from one sentence using words like, like this in the first place and so on. Then it makes it a lot easier to, for the reader. My third point about paragraphs is how the paragraphs fit together. And I will show you now on the next slide an example of a fairly typical master's thesis literature review. And if it's not a high quality master's thesis or if the student is just working on the thesis, we might see our literature reviews like this. So we have three articles here about entrepreneurial well-being and uh, the literature review is written by just uh, summarizing each of these uh, articles separately. So this lacks structures and typically when you want to uh, engage a reader and explain ideas to the reader, it's much better to focus on the ideas instead of to focus on the articles. So instead of writing like this, one article says something, second article says something, third article says something, try to identify what are the key themes in the articles and then you write these paragraphs around the three themes. So this would be a different way of writing the same. And uh, the first one introduces that there are these two kinds of well-being. There is, uh, there is uh, hedonic and eudaimonic well-being in entrepreneurship. And these two different kinds of well-beings are a theme and they occur in all these articles. Then there is uh, another theme is that well-being is context dependent and then the paragraph talks about this context dependency and how it uh, is managed, it's, uh, discussed in these articles. And uh, the third uh, is that all of these articles suggest some future research and that is what the third paragraph is about. So instead of writing uh, like explaining what one study did, what other study did, what, what third study did, you should focus on the common themes that these articles have and then structure of writing around the themes instead of as the articles. How you can actually do this kind of paragraph, uh, paragraph level or, or section level structuring is through outlining. So I'll be using our article as an example and uh, this article is about retirement of entrepreneurs and here is the word document. So how we structure the article is that we use uh, words outlining tools. So you can see there it's print layout, a uh, web layout, outline and draft. When you go to the outline and then uh, you uh, click here, show first line only. So that pretty much shows you the beginning of the topic sentence of each paragraph. And it shows you uh, this uh, kind of like a hierarchy depending on the headings. And now, now we can take a look at, okay, so do these headings fit together? So uh, this is uh, about retirement, uh, uh, about exit generally, what drives exit generally. And then uh, this is our specific explanation using something called role theory. So we go from, from general to specific. And then uh, ideally, if the article is really well written, you can get the, the idea by reading these topic sentences. If the topic sentences just uh, explain that one article says something, another one says something, a third one says something, then you are not really telling a story in the article. Then let's focus on style. And uh, style, we have two elements. There's abstractness, jargon and active voice is the first. And then we have simplicity and lack of clutter. Uh, there was this great article on writing and uh, in academic, uh, in Journal of Marketing, which is the, the top journal in marketing. And uh, the authors studied what makes an article understandable and then what causes researchers to write articles in a way that is needlessly complicated. And they identified that uh, clarity, 
which they defined as writing in concrete instead of abstract terms, so including examples, makes your article more understandable. Then uh, avoid, non -tech avoid technical language and jargon and using active voice. These make it understandable. And they also uh, give a lot of examples of, of good and bad writing in the article, so it's worth reading. And then they asked what makes researchers write in a way that is difficult to understand. And they identified the prior knowledge of the author who writes as one of the key determinants of writing in a complex way. So when a writer is, is very advanced, has a very advanced level of knowledge on the topic, they tend to kind of assume that the reader has the same, which they normally don't. And that leads to our use of jargon and use of these abstractions instead of concrete explanations of what does it actually mean in practice. Interestingly and importantly, they also found that the easier that the article is to read, the more impact it has in terms of citations. So clear writing cl clearly pays off for researchers as well. Then we have uh, the, the idea of simplicity and lack of clutter. And there tends to be this uh, tendency for some researchers to write in an overly complex way. And this is something that I discussed with my first dissertation supervisor. And he tended to write like very long sentences, maybe three or four lines. And I told him that I can understand what he's writing and why does, why does he want to write that way? And he said that uh, he wants to use rich language because rich language is virtue. And I thought that being understood is a more important virtue. And I like to keep my sentences short. And this is what most books on writing actually recommend. So keep your sentences short uh, be write in simple terms. If there's a complex word and a simple word, always pick the simpler one, unless you lose some meaning from there. This is uh, explained in pretty much every good book on writing, including the, uh, the publication manual here. And conciseness and clarity. If you can eliminate things from your article, your writing, unnecessary word, unnecessary sentences, even unnecessary paragraphs, it makes it easier for the reader to understand. The best book on, on writing and simplicity that I know is Zinser's on writing well. And he starts with uh, this, uh, that the biggest problem is, is lack of simplicity. So simplicity means uh, simply saying what you mean and nothing else. His opening example is this, uh, this government order during the Second World War. Government orders that such preparations shall be made as will completely obscure all federal buildings and non-federal buildings occupied by the federal government during an air raid for any period of time from visibility by reason of internal and external illumination. What does that mean? That is like the, the most jargon heavy uh, piece sentence that I've ever seen. And then President Roosevelt uh, said that, tell them that in buildings where they have to keep working, put something to across the windows. And that is basically what it means. If you say it that way, you're much more easier, uh, much more likely to be understood correctly. All right, let's apply the, uh, the idea of simplicity to uh, this example here. Can we simplify this long paragraph? If the unnecessary words, what Zinser refers to as clutter, that we can take away and there is plenty. So we can ask uh, Claude to strike through all unnecessary words, follow the, uh, the principles of simplicity and eliminating clutter, strike through everything that is not absolutely necessary to, uh, to understand. And it pretty much strikes through half of this text. So you can eliminate half of this text and still get your meaning across. So uh, it's a pretty, uh, I would say, maybe a bit too much has been taken away, but you get the point from here. I would perhaps retain some of those words, but this is a less than half the length and it expresses the ideas. It's easier to understand. So eliminating unnecessary words, uh, making long sentences shorter, make, uh, choosing short words over long words, that increases the quality of your writing, at least if your purpose is to communicate an idea. If you're writing to entertain like, writing a novel, then things are different. But when you write to communicate facts, then this is a lot better style. So to summarize, the, uh, everything starts from the paragraph. So if your paragraphs are lack unity, 
then it's very hard to understand. When you have one idea, then you have one paragraph. If your paragraph starts to be too long, it either means that you are trying to put more than one idea in the paragraph, in which case you need to split it. And if your paragraph is too short, then maybe you don't have, uh, have enough things to say about that topic, and maybe that paragraph could be deleted. These other ideas of simplicity, lack of jargon, using active voice, these are more of uh, micro level things, but they are so easy to implement once you start practicing them that they are worth doing.